New Hope TV, your encounter with God. Joshua was saying is, this land is so bad, it's under curse that even the person who tries to redeem this place or to rebuild this place is going to fall under the same curse. And this will be the cost that when they try to rebuild, they, when they put the first, uh, they, they put the foundation to the place, the firstborn will die. Of, and when they put the build the gates, they finish their building, the younger or the last born, the youngest son, he will die. And this was the curse. Now, let's read about the fulfillment of this curse, okay? First Kings chapter 16 and verse 24. It says, it was during his reign that Hiel, a man from Bethel, rebuilt Jericho. When he laid its foundation, what happened? It cost him the life of his oldest son, Abiram. And when he completed it and set up its gates, it cost him the life of his youngest son, Segub. This all happened according to the prophecy that was spoken by, by Joshua. Now what Joshua was saying is, hey, these, this, this sin is so bad that if anybody had to redeem, the cost is going to be the, 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 the life of the son. You know, I, I'd like to believe it like this. I'd like to see the fact that yours and my life was so destroyed by the enemy, so destroyed by fire and by so much of destruction in our life that for, for God to have redeemed us, God had to give up his only begotten son. Jesus had to die for us on the cross. The Bible says God loved us so much that, that he gave his only begotten son so that we can experience everlasting life. To the extent the Bible says Jesus became a curse. Not only that he, he bore the curse, he became the curse of God. All the cur You know, anybody that sins automatically comes under the curse of God. Now, the curse that we had to bear, Jesus took the curse upon himself and he bore our sins. Now, check this out. The two sons or whoever built this, rebuilt the place of Jericho, they did not do the wrong thing. Who did the wrong thing? The, no, not the father, the, the, the people of Jericho. The guy who rebuilt, he was from Bethel or from Israel. He was not an original inhabitant of uh, Jericho. Who did the sin? The people of Jericho did the sin. But who paid the price? Someone else paid the price for the sin of the people of Jericho. Why? So that their, uh, uh, their gates can be rebuilt. So that their foundation can be laid. So that their walls can be rebuilt. Let's read this verse together. So also Jesus, come on, read it loud with me. So also Jesus suffered and died outside the city gates to make his people holy by means of his own blood. Amen. What does the Bible say? In the same way, our Jesus, where did he die? Right outside the city gates. That's the place of punishment. That's the place where you and I should have died. That's the place where you and I should have been stoned. That's the place where you and I should have been cursed. That's the place where you and I should have lost our honor and our uh, respect. And Jesus says, he took our place and he died on our place outside the city gates. Why? So that he can make his people holy. Can I tell you who Jesus is? Let's read this verse loud and clear. One, two, three, go. So he explained to them, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. Jesus is saying, hey, everything that you see in the Old Testament about these gates, these, these, these fancy gates things, can I tell you who that gate is? I am the gate. I am that gate. I'm the, you, you, 
you want to know about the punishment? I took your punishment at the city gates. I bore your punishment. Everything that the Old Testament represented about the gates, the city gates, the town gates, the punishment gates, the, 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 the you know, place of power and influence, all of that, I, 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 I am that person. If you have me, you get every one of those things back. You get redemption from those things. Since you get redemption from those punishments, you don't have to be punished anymore if you follow me, if you walk in through me, because I am the gate for the sheep. Amen? I'm going to read a few verses that Jesus did to restore. All these things were represented in the Old Testament about those gates, but Jesus gave this to us in the New Testament. He gave us a, a position. You know, in the Old Testament, those who were at the gates, they had a prime position in the entire place, right? In the New Testament, anybody that receives Jesus, they have a great position. Do you want to read that? Let's read it. He raised us from the dead along with Christ. And where did he seat us? Where did he seat us? Come on, loudly. He seated us with him in in. In heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. We, we studied this verse in detail during the identity series. Check this out, okay? I want you to imagine this. The Father's throne is there in heaven. At the right hand of the Father who is seated, Jesus is seated, right? And at the right hand of Jesus who is seated, His bride, you and I, we are seated with the Father and the Son. Come on. Can there be a place more prominent than that? Can there be a position greater than that? Can any parliament give us a, a position so honorable that you're like, oh, this, this sounds bad. You know, what, you know what this parliament or what that company gave me that promotion or that job, that sounds better. Can anything outdo this? What did Jesus give us? Jesus gave us a position right next to the Father. He said, you are seated with me in heavenly places. Why? Because you received me, because you walked with me, because you, you accepted me into your heart. I'm going to elevate you from where you are. I know that your, your gates are burned down. Your, you know, all these things, you're destroyed. But because I am the gate, I am your door. I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to give you a place of position. Amen. And I'm going to position you next to me. In the Old Testament, the gates also represented protection. You know, it represented uh, the fact that the enemy cannot directly enter in and attack these people. And Jesus said it like this. This is what Jesus said. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can, no, come on, say it like you really are confident about this. No one can snatch them away from me. If you read the next verse, it says, no one can snatch them away from my father's hand either. In other words, uh, you know, see, if, if I'm holding my child, Zahal, can any of you try and come and snatch her out of my hands? See, if I'm holding the phone, I'm telling you, if I'm holding the phone, I may let it go. I may let it go. But if I'm holding my child, I will never let it go. Let her go. Why? Because she's part of me. Can you imagine God is saying, nobody can snatch them out of my hands. Jesus is saying, that is the protection that you are offered that you have here on the earth. What is the protection? That not just that you are given eternal life, but that nobody can touch you. See, you, when you live your life with that firm conviction that I have Jesus, who is Jesus? Jesus said, I am the gate. What do you get with the gate? With the gate, you get the protection that comes from the gate. And what did Jesus say? How will you offer protection? Nobody can snatch me out of the hands of Jesus, which means that I am, you know, how would you keep something which is very important to you? You know, when you get into a crowded metro station or a train or, you know, or a bus where there are too many people and you know that your phone is expensive, what would you do? You would keep it 
way inside where nobody can, you know, pickpocket you or take it off of your hands. And that's what Jesus says. I'm going to protect you in such a way that nobody can snatch you out of my hands. Amen. Not only was the gate a place of protection, it was also a place of power. The Bible says, but to those who called, both those who are called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Jesus Christ, what is he? He is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus is the wisdom of God. So not only did he give us position and protection, but he also gave us the power of God. When we are seated with Jesus in that place of position and when we are protected, we have access to the power of God. Everything, you know, that, that we lost when the enemy came and destroyed our gate, we get it back in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he is our gate. He is the gate that we, we celebrate today. He is the gate that we, that we want in every area of our life. We don't need any human beings to protect us. We don't need our offices, our jobs to protect us. We don't even need an insurance to protect us. I'm not saying it's bad to take an insurance. I'm saying that your protection, your trust is not in that insurance. I'm saying your protection comes from Jesus. And, and he's the one who gives you access to all the power everywhere in the world. Amen. The Bible, in fact, says that he also gives us provision. You know, a gate is the place from where all the provisions, all the trade happens at the gate of the city. All the provisions for the city comes through the gates. Can we read this verse together? Romans 8, 32. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? This morning when I was praying, I was asking God, God, Give me one word for the church. What is it? One word that you are speaking over the church. And God gave me this word. And I'm like, God, this doesn't look like it will fit in anywhere in my sermon. But I, 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 I tried to sneak it in here and saying, he is also the one that is going to provide for us. I, I, want, I want you to receive this as a, a promised verse for this week. Can you receive this? Let's, let's read it once again, okay? Read, read it with me. Since he did not spare... Even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he not give us everything else? Come on, is there anything more precious than his son? No. If he gave his only son for us, tell me, is there any need that that surpasses that? Anything that you need that surpasses Jesus? If God will give Jesus for us, what else will he not give us? Come on, your, your, your need for money, your need for a blessing, your need for a family, your need for that particular job promotion, all of that pales in comparison with the ultimate gift that God gave us. And this was the promise. God said, because I have given you my son, I will also give you everything else along with my son. Amen? So I want you to go back believing that in every area of your life the provisions of God is coming because he is the gate and because we have the gate we have the power the protection the 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 position and also the provision because God gave us Jesus he has given us everything else amen Amen. John chapter 10 and verse 9 Jesus, in fact, went on to say this. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come through me will be saved. What what, will happen if you walk through Jesus, you will be saved. See, every one of us needs this thing. Every one of us needs to be saved. You may be wondering... Pastor, why? I'm attending the church. I'm, I'm, I'm calling on the name of Jesus. I'm you know, doing everything right. Uh, see, l- like I told you a couple of Sundays back, Christianity is not about you doing good things. Christianity is uh, not about you, uh, you know, singing good songs. Christianity is about you being saved from something and for something. From hell for heaven, from eternal damnation to eternal life, 
from living a life for the enemy, for Satan, for the devil, to living a life for Jesus. You need to be saved. And how can you be saved? When you walk in through me. Jesus said, I am, I, I am the only door. I am the only gate. If you walk in through me, you will be saved. Amen? Not only will you be saved, what else will happen? You will... What does the Bible say? You will come and go freely. See, that is, that is what I like about Jesus. There is so much of freedom for anybody that walks with Jesus, anybody that submits to Jesus, anybody that yields to Jesus, that there is so much freedom that God has given to you. He doesn't put restrictions on your heart, on your spirit. He'll, you know, he, he's like this loving father. That even when you are making a mistake, sometimes he allows you to make that mistake and, and learn from your mistake and help you to not do that mistake. He is not a God who, who is legalistic. He is a God of grace who allows you. It says you, he, you can come in and, and go out freely. There is, there is no... Uh, payment required. There is no subscription required. There's nothing that Jesus asks of you. All that he says is, do you want me? Yes, come in through me. I am the gate. When you have the gate, you have everything that I bring along. If, if God would, the father would give his son, why would, he, why would he not give everything else along with the son? Amen. The third thing that Jesus says is, when you do that, you will find good pastures, good food. When you walk in and out of me, you will find good pastures in every area of your life. Not just in your spiritual walk, but in your businesses, you will find good pastures. You will find good contacts. You will find good influences. You will find good openings, good networks, good connections, good pastures in your uh, family, you will experience good pastures in your relationships with your, uh, uh, you know, friends, everywhere you go, if you walk in and out through Jesus, you will find good pastures. I don't know if you like it or you understand it, but I'm prophesying over you this morning. I'm believing that when you take this seriously, when you say, Lord, you are the gate and I want to walk in through you and walk through you all the days of my life. I just want to live my life with you at the center of my life, you know, when we look at it, gates look like the exit of the city, right? But essentially, the gates in the Old Testament was the center of all the activity. Everything centered around the gates of the city. In other words, for, for us, everything has to center around Jesus. When we surround everything around Jesus, we will experience this thing. We will experience good pastures. Amen. Jesus actually goes on to say, I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a, must be a thief and a robber. If, if somebody does not respect the gate, now tell me about this, if somebody tries to come in from the back door of your house, what would you call that person? You wouldn't say, oh, oh, salesman, he's just trying to sell me something. No, no, no. If he's coming from the back door, he's definitely not coming to sell anything. He's definitely coming to steal th some things from your life, right? So let me tell you this. When, you know, we live in a world of, of uh, internet and technology, you will find things uh, all the time. You will find a lot of talks about Jesus and God and all these things. What you should look for is, is this person coming through the gate? Is this person glorifying Jesus? Is it all about Jesus? Or is it, is it about this person? Is, is he taking an, a, another route? Is he teaching about himself or is he teaching about the Bible? If the person is not coming from the gate, because if the person is not coming in through Jesus, if he is not coming in the name of Jesus, if he's not talking about Jesus, if he's not glorifying Jesus, what does the Bible call him? Come on. You can, you know, I'm not calling you, to, I'm not asking you to judge anybody. I'm asking you to read the Bible. The Bible says if somebody does not come through the gate, takes the other exit, tries to use other explanations and, you know, 
I've heard people talk about God and church and you know ministry and, and I'm like, where did you read that again? <laughs> where did you find that? If it's not in the Bible, if it is not what Jesus said, if it is not what Jesus has mentioned, what Jesus taught and what Jesus expected us to believe, then that is not necessarily what God wants us to. Amen. We have to always, including me, even if I say something to you that you don't necessarily agree, that you don't necessarily find in the Bible, you have all the rights to question it and say, Pastor, where did you find this? Where does it say in the Bible that you can do that? Where in the Bible does it say that you can say like this or, you know, act like this? If there is no precedence, if it's not coming through the gate, then it is a thief or a robber. The Bible says, but the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. What does the gatekeeper do? The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. Can I tell you what is our calling in life? Our calling is to be gatekeepers for Jesus. He is the gate and we are the gatekeepers. In the Old Testament, being a gatekeeper was a full-time ministry. Did you know this? They would appoint specific people to stay at the gates of the city, of the tabernacle, of the temple. In fact, the psalmist wrote it like this. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand days elsewhere. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than to live good life in the homes of the wicked. That is our calling. You know, these gatekeepers everywhere, just go back home and search for the word gatekeeper in your Bible, okay? You will find most of those verses that you will find in the Old Testament, the, the word gatekeeper will come with the gatekeepers, the musicians, the singers, and the Levites. That's how the, the term goes. Everywhere these gatekeepers were, they were appointed to be musicians, they were appointed to be singers, to worship. You know, the, the presence of God was inside the tabernacle the presence of God was just inside this door just inside this gate and the guys who are gatekeepers they are not trying to protect the presence of God they are they are there to worship the presence of God and that's why the psalmist says better is one day in his courts than a thousand days and elsewhere I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than to live a good life in the homes of the wicked. Amen? Amen. Can I invite you to, to receive this gate? To receive, to walk in through this gate. Jesus in fact said it like this. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. Who is this narrow gate? This is Jesus. And it says the highway to hell is broad. And the gate is wide. For many are those who choose that way. But read it with me. But the gateway to life is very narrow. And the road is difficult. And only a few ever find it. Why? Because it's narrow. It's not easy to walk in. But if you are willing to walk in through this gate, you will find the gateway to life. Amen. There are many people, I'm sure, who, who are wondering, uh, what do I have to do to experience this Jesus, to experience this life, to experience this provision? It is very simple. Just believe. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And along with your along with everyone in your household. Just believe in Jesus. Why don't you open a door? Why don't you become the gate in your house? You know, Jesus became the gate for you. Why don't you become the gate in your house? Why don't you say, I'm going to believe. I know that nobody in my house is believing for a miracle, but I'm going to be the first person to believe and pray. And I'm going to open the gate for Jesus to come in. You know, Psalm 24, Jesus said, the Bible says that open up you ancient gates. Open up, be, be lifted up you everlasting doors. Let the king of glory, let it just come in and let him just flood in to your house, to your life, into every nook and corner of your life. How do you receive him? Just believe in the words that he said. What did he say? He said, 
I am the gate. Anybody that walks through me, they will come in and go out freely and they will find good pastures. Amen. I don't know what area of life you are in this morning, but I'm going to specifically pray for this one thing. This one thing about protection, provision, position, and, and, and if, if, you are, if you are struggling in any one of these areas where you feel that, wait, I, I'm not accepted, that I, I don't have the same protection, I don't have the same power, I don't have the same provision, I don't have good pastures. Everywhere that I go, I find bad pastures. I'm going to pray this very specifically for you. But along with that, I want to open this time also for people who have never accepted Jesus as the Lord and the Savior of your life. You've never believed in Jesus before. I want to open this up for you so that you can put your faith in Jesus. You can just say, I trust in you, Jesus. I believe in you. Uh, You know, I know that that's all that you're asking me to do. And today, I want to start that. Uh, There are many people in this place who are in different places in their journey with God. But Some of you, you can start that journey right now, right here, today, if only you're willing to just trust in Him and believe. Amen? All eyes closed. Let me ask you this first question. Is there anybody in this place who has not yet put your faith in Jesus? Who has not yet received Jesus a hundred percent? You may be coming to church for a while, but you have not... You have not yet received Jesus. You have not yet believed in Jesus. You have have not yet given your life completely to Jesus. If that is you, but but God has been speaking to you today, this morning, and God has been telling you that, hey, I am the gate. If God has been speaking to you, I want you to just open your heart and receive him into your life. Open your heart and just invite him in to your life. If you would like to just receive Jesus, this is not for everybody. This is for those who are doing this for the very first time. If you would like to welcome this Jesus who is the gate, who is your gate, who wants to protect you, who wants to provide for you, who who took your punishment, who took the punishment of your sins upon himself, who will give you the power, who will give you that position to be seated with him in heavenly places. If you want to receive this Jesus into your heart, I'd like for you to just put your hands up in the air and I can pray for you. Second thing that I'm going to pray this morning is for those people who are, who, who are praying, saying, God, I, I, I feel very insecure. I feel that my gates are broken down. I feel that these are the areas of my life where every, every now and then I'm facing attacks of the enemy. Every now and then I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the enemy just come in and do what he likes. But today I want to close all those doors. I, I want to really believe in you and I want to walk in and out of you and I want to experience that good pastures. If you are praying that prayer, then I want you to just just... Just just express your heart out to God. If you are saying, God, restore my gates. Restore my gates. You are my gate. You are everything that I need, Lord. You are everything that I need. If I have Jesus, I don't need anything else. I don't need anybody else. If you are praying that, if you are asking that, I want you to just express your heart to God right now. Just let him just come and invade that one area of your life. It may be your personal failures. It may be the failures of your home, your family, your finances. Whatever area of your life you're suffering, you're struggling. The Lord is saying, I am the gate. He who comes in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and they will find good pastures. 